Hi, welcome everyone to Bainbridge Arts and Crafts um, and to our exhibition this month called Taking Shape, which we have seven different sculptors here exhibiting. And today we are fortunate to have Leah Gerard from Seattle come and talk about her work that's here in the gallery and talk about her process. Um, and uh, at the end, uh, you can ask some questions. Um, we'll have time for that. So uh, thank you, Leah, for being here. Yeah, Hi. <laughs> shop with my ex-husband and we made gigantic heavy things and we had a huge shop full of um, tools like giant drill presses and milling machines and giant fat tables that weighed 20,000 pounds and it was just ridiculous and so I was like I don't want to do that kind of stuff anymore I don't want to rely on heavy tools and this is all I need I need wire cutters pliers blue tape in my hands. So that's what inspired me trying to figure out how to make this work. So, so the basic process for just simply starting the piece is just two wires like that and then I 
just get it started and kind of hold it there and then separate them. I don't know if you guys remember making God's eyes in church or camp <laughs> with the yarn and the popsicle sticks. It's the same exact thing. I just wrap around each one. And this is literally all I do for the whole time I'm making the piece. So it's a really, really simple thing. And then I just I bend the wires up to get the shape that I want. And then I can continue to just wrap around. And you can, like, if you wanted to make something really fast, you can wrap it more loosely than I do. And this is a really, it's a really easy, fun thing to do. I taught a class to kids. I used to live on Dachau, and I taught a class to kids. And one of the kids in the class continued on with it, and he was making pieces to sell in the local craft store there, which is really cute. So that would be a really rudimentary piece. And then where the blue tape comes in is when I'm making a larger piece. I have to add more. And this was kind of the hang-up for the whole time of making the pieces is why I couldn't figure out how to make them any bigger than this. I didn't, I hadn't figured out a process for adding more of this, the guiding wire or whatever you want to call it. So I figured out that if I had two pieces at each corner, then I can stair step and and put new pieces on as I go. And I hold them in place with the blue tape until they're secure and then I can take it away. So that was like um, just sort of the, the point at which I was, at. like then it was limitless. I could just keep going for as long as I wanted. And uh, I also am able to sort of create a little bit more intricacy and a little bit more patterns and design because I can, as I go, I can, as I'm wrapping along, I can take the blue tape off and then I can split these and have a little bit more interest going on. And this is basically the start of another one of these. And I will follow, uh, sometimes I just find something round to follow like a pizza tray or something. But I also will make templates, which is something that I picked up from a lot of my blacksmith friends. That's the way blacksmiths work. They have steel tables like this and soapstone. And they'll draw the template for whatever railing or bracket they're making, and they follow that with each piece. So um, that's the way, so, you know, with these are kind of free form, like, I just kind of make them following a circle pattern and then I play with the making it smaller and wider as I go. But then I also do a lot of sketching. And um, so this is what one of my sketches would look like. And a lot of times I start sketching something. I brought these drawings in, in particular because I'll start an idea and I don't know where it's going, so a lot of times I have to tape more paper on because <laughs> I run out of room. So I have with these two. And uh, I put over there, um, after the top or whatever you want, there's a, I put my original sketch for that piece on the wall so you can kind of see how I go from a piece of paper to because I find that if I'm doing something that complicated, if I preform it and just do it as I go, it just gets away from it and I can't do anything with it. So these are some of the things that I keep around my shelf to um, use in pieces or just give me inspiration. 
Like this piece was in a piece for a while, but then I replaced it with something else because I just still wanted to have this piece because um, I really like the form. And I find these sometimes on the beaches, or sometimes I find them uh, at, I really like second use stores and, you know, building surplus stores. Um, the other kinds of things I need tools for, though, luckily I have a lot of friends who are metal workers, because I have to, these come in solid chains. These are off old, um, Logging industry boom chains, they're like six feet long and they have a toggle on one end and a big ring on the other and the logging industry used to use them because um, you could link them together and you could create, that's how they created the big log booms or they would help, they would create a boom at the end of the river and so they would cut down the trees and just let them flow down the river and so they were kind of, you know, an infinite chain because you just keep adding more on but in order to get the links off like this, I have to cut a link, and so I have a lot of these <laughs> lying around, but I don't throw much away because I figure someday it'll make it into a sculpture. <clears throat> and these are pieces that I changed my mind about, or <laughs> I ended up having to kind of unweave, but still I just kind of keep the stuff around. I've done some printmaking and some sort of like some 2D work with this stuff. Um, and then the rocks are mostly from beaches on Bashan Island because I really like the round, smooth river rocks. And this piece is an this is my newest piece. And actually, this piece once existed. <laughs> And the last time I showed it, I just decided that I was done with it, and I cut it apart. And so this part of it, and this part, this part, and then some other ones all ended up getting incorporated into this piece, because I was able to just cut it apart and reweave it a little bit and create that. So. And I since learned that, and so it kind of feels like a painter when they're tired of the canvas that they painted and it's not selling or it's just not finding its home. A lot of my painter friends just, you know, paint over it at that point, make it a piece. So, I've also done a bunch of playing, I'm really inspired by Irish. Um, Celtic drawing, and I find that just doing this kind of drawing, um, it's a really nice meditative practice, and it kind of opens up my, um, I don't want to make anything this uh, precise, but just by drawing it, it keeps me, because this, this process is kind of, um, you know, it's sort of wacky. So, like, it's nice to uh, kind of discipline yourself and have a, a stronger point to start from. In, um, let's see, it was 2019, I had a show at Fort Culture Gallery in Seattle. And these, this piece on the wall, Tired of Swings, and the 2D stuff next to it is from that, and sentiment is also from that. This this is called sentiment. Is also from that show, and the show was based off of um, a lot of my imagery that I get, especially from this show in particular. I sort of would make the pieces and do the sketches, and then the pieces I could kind of find things in my past that I realized where the image came from, if that makes sense. Like the, the tire swings are from the playground at the school where I went to, an elementary school, and I, I stayed in the same neighborhood my whole life, so 
when, as I got older, you know, like sneaking out of the house and like wandering around the neighborhood with your friends. So you get this whole new perspective on your neighborhood, like at nighttime and when it's empty. And so sort of like wandering around these places that and seeing how they're transformed by either a full moon or um, maybe a no moon night, just the kind of differences. And um, so I kind of found that that was where a lot of images. So I went back into that time of minute and I found a lot of old photos. And I started doing these photo transfer pieces with the old photos. So I take the photos and I make black and white copies of them. And then I use an acrylic medium. And I take the acrylic on the wood and then I put the photocopy transfer down, face down on it and press it as hard as I can. And then I let it dry overnight. And then you can soak the paper and rub it off and the photocopy stays in your acrylic medium. And so those gave me a, a way to kind of um, relate the pieces. Because I, mean, I don't think that this obviously screams tire swing when you look at it. But when you kind of look at my pieces, the, the 2D pieces on the side, you can kind of maybe get an idea. And sometimes with abstract sculpture and things, it's kind of hard to, I mean, people feel like they connect to it. but. Sometimes it's hard to, it can be hard to get a connection and sometimes like another, I feel like the 2D pieces um, kind of create a bridge for people and for myself to help tell my story more through my work. And so this, be, this that show for Culture is a really personal, strong, um, expression of everything that this all started out as because I, I was I kind of felt like it was what I was trying to say for the first part of my art career and now coincidentally with the pandemic I was ready to take kind of a sabbatical anyway because I had done this show that took a lot out of me and um, so for the last for this year, I've been uh, taking it easy and making some pieces here and there. And this is actually my first new piece. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of 10 years into creating pieces and focusing on my art. So I'm kind of at a transitioning point of it. And the name of the show for culture was On the Chord. Well, the name was Sentiment, but it was based off of a, a word called om, omicord, which is a, a word that Federico Fellini created for his autobiographical film. And he combined, um, it means to kind of remember. <laughs> so it's like kind of what I'm trying to say is like that the feeling that I had when I was wandering around. And my, my dad was a landscape architect, and he passed away when I was pretty young. So one of my processes for dealing with grief and loss is going to his parks and wandering around. And so there's just kind of that feeling that you can't really remember all of your memories, and you don't know which your memories are memories of photographs that you've seen a million times and but your memories of actual memories. So that's kind of what these pieces were about. Um, so I think that it would be easier to talk about the process and stuff if I know what people are curious about. So for and just open it up to questions for a little while. So what inspired that? Um, this was a sketch that I had from a little while ago. And I, I collect these chunks of wood. And um, I think it was just an idea that I had wanted to try for a long time. And 
Um, I, the show kind of inspired it because I really wanted to create a new piece for this show. And I really enjoy the process of figuring out um, things like that. Like I had to find the drills and drill up into the wood and then on the back I have the screws that come out and secure it. So it's kind of fun when there's just a little bit of a problem to figure out in the piece. So, yeah? Your work involves literally tens of thousands of wraps. Uh-huh. <laughs> and does that do something to you? I mean, you're yeah. <laughs> um, I, I've i always had, like, um, like, I used to be a cook, and I was always a prep cook because I am very happy when I get a big pile of box of potatoes and someone tells me to peel them all. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And then when I was in a metal fabrication shop, like, drill a million holes in all these pieces of metal, you know, I was like, I'm perfectly happy. So it is kind of 